sigma variables are such a powerful feature, but if you're having many of them, it's really hard to keep an overview. It's easy to get lost if you have hundreds of them, which happens easily if you are building a big design system. So today I've invited the plugin creators, Marcin and Mr. Biscuit to give us a demo of their plugin, Variable Visualizer, and to give us a sneak peek into their talk at the Interdesign Systems Conference, where they are going to share a full deep dive into their plugin and slot components. So now I have with me Marcin and Mr. Biscuit. Welcome. Hi guys. Hi. So excited to talk to you about your conference talk. Can you both please briefly introduce yourselves and tell us what you do? Sure. So I will start. Hi guys, I'm Martin. I'm a design system architect based in Berlin. And um, from the last four years, I'm working um, heavily on multi-brand huge design systems. And my, um, my experience is mostly product design. So I did a lot of product design past and graphic design. And right now I'm something like a bridge between designer and developer. So that's me. And now Biscuit. Hi everyone, I am Mr. Biscuit. I am super fond on pushing the boundaries on what is possible in the design space and also connecting between the designers and the de developers. I also build toolings that help the design process to be much easier and more capable than what you are natively able to do. So that is the intro from my side. Pass it to you, Sue. Nice. So at the Into Design Systems conference, you have an extended slot, which means 90 minutes. We will see a lot of hands-on practical demos and you will get, give us a lot of tips. So what's the main problem you are tackling with your talk and why did you create Variable Visualizer? Yeah, so when we are working with variables in Figma, we see huge potential. It's mind-blowing what it can do. But it's it's super hard to unlock the full potential of Figma variables if you are only using uh, building your variables in the in the table. We find that a lot of the times when we are building and structuring our variables, we have a mental model or like an image in our head what the relation is between one variable to the next called aliasing, but that is not nowhere shown in the table. So when we are building um, more and more complex variables, we kind of got lost in, in this dark forest. I don't know where, where we are, you know, so it's scary. So that is why we build variable visualizer, literally to help you visualize what is going on between these variables. So yeah, that's, that's why we built the plugin. So can you briefly show us how it actually works? I'm super excited to have a look. You should see the file that is the getting yes. started with variables visualizer. So this file is also in the community. So you can like play with this as a demo. And now if I open the variables that are created in this file, you see that on the left side, I have my collections and here I have my variables. But those collections are already in, in, in relation with each other, right? But because we just see the list and here we have the simple table, then we do not know what is relation between color mode, devices, primitives, team, right? We can just make assumption that maybe color mode is connected with primitives or maybe with team or team with, or, or team with color mode, but this is like, you need to actually figure this out. So now if I even click here on the, on my variable, then, then, then to understand from where it's coming, I need to actually find the name of the collection that will be somewhere at the top. So if I go here, I see that, oh, this is a primitive. But you see how how long um, how how much time it, it took me, and if this will be like far bigger collection, then this is a nightmare. So to fight with this problem, we came with the variable visualizer, which is like a graph di diagram map. And here you can see that I see all my collections using this file, and they are used. They are in some kind of relations, right? So now if I choose. I actually filter my carrot orange. So you see that my primitives from carrot orange, they are going to my color mode that I have light and dark. And then this color then is consumed by the team collection. And then here, this is us on secondary. So basically, if I want to find the relation, I see everything like on the, on the map, which is pretty cool. But still, this is pretty simple case. And you see that when I'm zooming out, then this line disappears. So we did it in purpose because we do not want to over stimulate the user. 
because trust me, you will zoom out and then you have all these lines, you actually cannot even see your collections, right? So that's the problem. So I think like this solution is pretty also intuitive. And now let's go to more advanced file that I'm actually using. So here, um, if I open the variables, you can see on the left that the amount of collection is pretty huge, right? So then without any map, any structure, you will never understand what's, what's happening, right? And then if I go to variables visualizer again, you see this is my whole universe, like this is my whole forest. But then thanks, thanks to this like breadcrumbs or like this, this notes, right? I can still understand, okay, where I'm actually am because when I'm clicking, right, I, I'm jumping between, between my, my notes and my specific variables, right? And then I always can find the way home because without this, this is actually impossible, right? To understand where am I and what are the connections. So basically this is variable visualizer in a nutshell. Wow, that's mind blowing. That's, can you zoom in once again? Uh, of course, <laughs> sorry, I did it too fast. Yeah, so I can zoom in and for example, here we have famous button, right? Button is always- Yeah, let's have a look at the button if you don't mind. Yeah, of course. So how can I find all the connections, all the variables in my, in my button? So here I have like, my buttons have three collections. So we see here I have size, here I have experience, here I have emphasis. I mean, names are like up to each builder. And to, to make it easier, I'm then passing all of this to the something like output, right? Because at the end, my, my button is just a button. It's one button. It do not have like this multiple variants, multiple components. It's just one component that should be fitted with this data that's coming from here, right? And this data will be set as, as a JSON. So basically, this is how build looks like. And now if I zoom out, you see that the output of my, of my button is grouped here, but then all those lines going so we can now track it, right? We're going here, 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 and then I double click just... on the line as well. Yeah, and then you see it, and, and this is like ending here. Mm -hmm. wow. And then from here we can still like track it. Okay, so what is the relation, right? And the relation is completely up to you. You can you can build amazing things with variables. It's only your imagination stopping you. Wow, that's that's mind blowing. I mean, literally, if you have so many connections and variables. This is like a huge time saver to find anything in your designs. And it is pretty common for big design systems to have this many or even more variables, right? Yes, this will only grow, right? It's, it's, still, it's still, let's say, um, not even a teenager. It's like yeah, baby. so without your plugin, people will get lost in the forest. Even I was lost many times in the forest, right? That's why, that's why we came with this, with this idea. Yeah, it has so many cool features. Do you have any favorite one? Okay, so this is actually a good question, but I will also like stop sharing now. Uh, so for me, the, the map, right? So the visualization of the connection between variables is for sure the, the most or the best feature. But I also love the mode simulation that BC will show you this soon because like Figma natively does not showing us like what is actually selected, which mode is actually selected. So the, those those small templates are like a bit like like of the misleading us sometimes. Duplicate collection, I love it because like I cannot do this natively. Also copying variables from collection to collection because Figma have it, but like it's not very stable. Uh, and uh, last but not least, I would say batch aliasing, because if you're working with huge amount of data, so like you have a lot of collection um, variables in a collection, and if you want to connect all those lines manually or make this relation in, 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 in native Figma table, this sometimes is like taking hours, and with batch aliasing, you can actually connect some alias, right? Like hundreds of thousands of, of variables in a automated way, so it's like one second. So, so this is like... Huge time saver. Yes, I can imagine people will save so much time with this. I could imagine that this is also very, very ben beneficial for developer handoff or developers. Have you heard any stories from developers using it? Yes, yeah, so that's why actually we, we were surprised because the plugin was built basically to help designers or design system architects like me. However, when I started like, speaking with my developers, they were actually very happy that, 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 that I have this in, in a graphical way, 
because what we're doing um, when we're creating this relation between collection, this is also need to be transferred to I mean ex um, transferred to code. So in CSS, for example, there is something like variable scoping, right? So then the the, the developer need to actually take all those different colors for the button and also need to save it somehow, right? So then the developer actually follow the same di diagram, so the same map. And that's why we came with the feature that in the plugin, even if you are a developer and you just have the view access, you still can see the whole diagram. You just cannot edit, right? Because you don't have the edit access. But still, I think this is beneficial for them, for the po both parties. So designer and developer working hand to hand. Wow, this is so mind blowing and will save people so much time. You have mentioned that this is just a little preview and people will see a lot more advanced and hands-on tutorials and demos and practical tips at the Intel Design Systems conference, right? Yes, this is just like tip of the iceberg. And I, I promise you guys that you will be mind blown how much automation and logic you can push into variables and slots. And, and slots. Thank you so much. I cannot wait to see your talk at the Indo Design Systems Conference to see your practical hands-on session. And um, yeah, that's it with our interview. Thank you so much, Martin and Mr. Biscuit, and see you at the conference. See you, see you guys.